The weather this weekend has been perfect. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So this weekend the weather was beautiful. We had lows in the 40s and the highs was around 70. I was able to get out super early both Saturday and Sunday and get a ton done. And I want to take you around the garden to show you what all that was. This is going to be like a mini garden tour for the back since I'm not having a September garden tour per se. So I'm going to show you everything I got completed Saturday and Sunday. Uh, there's a couple more videos that will premiere before this one, and I'll just go over a bit of everything I've done. I'm so happy that this space is coming together a lot quicker than I thought it would. I've been able to get a lot of the things that I've had sitting around in containers for quite a long time into the ground this weekend, which makes me extremely happy. So let's get going. So I wanted to start out in this area, which has had the most change, kind of. Uh, I had to move the sprinkler head over a bit right here. I edged this bed completely and threw down some mulch that I got from Lowe's. Uh, now this will, bed will come back a little further. You can see there's a stake right there, this green stake. I haven't decided yet whether this bed needs to come straight towards the fence or if it needs to come um, at an angle or kind of curved gradually to where the gate post will be. There will be a 10 foot gate here in this area. So until after the fence is installed, uh, I won't know exactly what that's going to look like. Uh, and then I will either curve the bed or leave it straight uh, to make sense of that space. So we got all of this down. I did use the uh, contractor's painter's um, paper down here. I found this has worked extremely well. I did have someone comment on a video and said they had issues with it not breaking down over time. When I'm digging these holes for all the plants this weekend, it has broke down really well and suppressed the grass for me. So I don't know if I will be using cardboard again because cardboard can be difficult to uh, cut into with a shovel initially before it breaks down a little bit. So although cardboard can be free, depending on where you're getting it, the painter's contractor paper was only $10 uh, for a 250 foot uh, roll of it. And I really like the results that it's giving so far. This side of the bed will also get extended and there will be a four foot gate here. Uh, this is quite a large opening right now, but until the fence is installed, I didn't want them to have to break the fence uh, in a weird area. So if they can hit it anywhere between this area at the end of a panel, uh, I will be happy. And I'll curve the beds in gently to meet the fence. And then there will be two um, Limelight Prime hydrangeas that I currently have on the patio, as I've mentioned, that will be going on either corner of the fence. Inside of this bed, it is going to be fronted with uh, the boxwoods, the sprinter boxwoods that I have in containers up there. You can see all my little containers I got to plant. I did cut out a huge portion of what I needed to plant. I got everything in the ground that wasn't an evergreen this weekend, which cut back a significant chunk of what I actually have to plant. So this will be fronted with sprinter boxwoods, as I mentioned, and in between these trees, I have some proudberry coral berries that I think I'm gonna plant here. They have that really nice uh, blue foliage, and in winter, they'll have those really nice uh, berries, and I think that will just be a really good uh, backdrop here against the fence. I'm thinking about planting a clematis along the fence as well. I've got to decide what that variety is going to be. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunities around the fence in general to plant a clematis. So I'm going to pick out some varieties that I like and probably do that as well. This area of the garden, I did get quite a lot in. So I planted the gem box, which are these tiny, tiny shrubs here. These are uh, a holly. These are a boxwood alternative. They get uh, two to three foot tall and wide. And so instead of using boxwood in this area, I just decided I would use a new type of shrub that's newer to the market and form a nice hedge one day. They are evergreen, just like boxwoods, and they have little uh, nice, a little larger than boxwood leaves, but it's still gonna be a very nice texture in this area and a boxwood alternative to combat boxwood blight if I end up ever having that issue in my garden. So I added all of these hydrangeas. These were the ones I got on discount. Uh, this is Tough Stuff Aha. Most likely the blooms will be pink. Um, some of them are a little more purple right now or a little blue. They will definitely be pink in my high alkaline soil. I did get the Firelight 
tidbit hydrangea planted that Proven Winter sent out to me. Uh, it's going to be really beautiful right there in the space. This right here is a blue chiffon hibiscus. Uh, it's a, just a baby, so it'll take it a while to grow up. And so in this area, I've kind of left a little opening for a path. I believe I mentioned in one of my prior videos that I would like to do kind of a walking path around the willow. And so I just left a three to four foot area right here. These boxwoods will grow in. So it's intended to be more like a tiny walking path just to be able to enter and access this garden because it is quite deep. If I didn't leave a path, it would be difficult to get stuff in there to clean up after the seasons. So I ripped out all the liatris. You can see it's way different right here. I did that this morning. I put in a little honey oak leaf hydrangea that I've had sitting around in a container for a really long time. I picked that up from Hertz Gardens uh, and it has just struggled in its container. I did have it in the ground elsewhere on the property in the front. It got a little too much sun. I'm hoping here eventually it will settle in and do okay under the willow. This is an evergreen that I've also had in a container for quite a long time. I don't know the variety specifically. Uh, it was introduced by Isley, which is an Oregon uh, company that does really, really cool evergreen introductions. I've actually had three of these and two of them died and this was a replacement for one of them. And they were actually on either side of the steps to my front porch. And I'm not sure what happened, if they weren't getting enough water or they just didn't like the space. When I replaced them with boxwoods, the boxwoods are doing fine. But you can see it just kind of browns in here. So this may be a temporary um, shrub to put in here. If it doesn't live, I will just unfortunately have to remove it. But for right now, I'm really excited to have found a place for it. It stays relatively narrow and gets maybe six foot tall. So it'll be a nice little structure here in winter for the garden. So this area right here will still have some more planting in it, but I did add in some more of my shrubs that I'd gotten on discount. This is Double Play Big Bang. It's a spirea. The Atlas rose that I dug up from the front of the flower bed around where I have all the super tunias is actually already putting out new growth. So it's much happier in this location than it was in the front flower bed for some reason. I planted a bank of these Toto barberries. So you can see they have a lot of green on them right now. That's just from being in the greenhouse in more of a protected area. But you'll notice some of the top growth here is a very red, dark maroon color that will deepen even a little more. So I was looking for some really nice contrast here with this golden ticket privet. And I think that will just be a lovely red maroon contrast here on the corner and side of the fence. I also removed my nephophia that I had grown from seed. I will probably end up removing the other stuff that's here as well, just to kind of clear this out. I don't have anything to place here yet. I might replace it with some different perennials. Um, I need to be cognizant of one day this willow is going to get kind of large and something will need to be placed there that can transition or it may need to be moved later. Uh, around here, I put a Mr. Poppins. I went in and cleaned out all of the weeds that I could find under the willow. They were prolific. This is a shrub that I got from Hertz Gardens um, last February, I believe. And it's been in the container, kind of just suffering um, at the back of my property for since that time. I have Miss Poppins over there. You can probably see there's the red berries. I'll take you up there to show them. Mr. Poppins is the male pollinator for Mrs. Poppins. And Mrs. Poppins, of course, since she's the female, she gets the red berries. Mr. Poppins has just got generally green foliage. I think he does have some insignificant flowers uh, when they go to bloom, but otherwise I wanted to kind of tuck him out of the way so he wouldn't be seen as much. I did continue the gem box down this path here. I removed some perennials. I will probably end up moving this cat mint. As I mentioned, I love cat mint, but it's gonna interfere with these gym boxes a little bit. So I may tuck it around. It might be a good option to put over there where I just removed that nephophia uh, out of the way. And that way that area can be cleaned up a little bit. This is a white album euonymus. Um, I've never grown a euonymus in my garden. Some can be invasive, we'll see how this one does, but I kind of like that it provides a nice texture, uh, white variegation here under this Proudberry Coralberry. 
and next to this gym box. I continued the gym box around here until we get to the flagstone path that I have here. So I ended up planting the dwarf mondo grass here. As I mentioned in that video, I have an entire flat left to finish it after the gate is installed uh, with the fence down here. So as you can see, I kind of stopped planting around here. I will set up all this stone after the fence is installed and then continue tucking that last flat I have of that in the ground. I planted a white pugster butterfly bush, which I picked up on clearance as well. These are all the roses that I planted in that video, doing really well, lots of buds for blooms on them. And in this area around the maple, I did dig up the denim and lace Russian sage that I had right here and replaced it with the wee white hydrangeas that I had got in. Uh, they're actually putting on some blooms. They'll kind of be insignificant this season. Uh, but I think at one day when this boxwood hedge grows together in a perfect circle and the wee white hydrangeas are a little larger, it'll be really nice white blooms surrounded by this evergreen hedge. These are my Monet Purple Effect YG Luck. They're tiny, tiny. I got them in the ground and hopefully they will just become a mass of variegated foliage right here. In this area in general next to the shed, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be planting quite yet. I do have some brass buckle uh, hollies coming in. They are a beautiful yellow color that is evergreen and they stay super short, only a foot to a foot and a half tall and wide. And I'm thinking about dotting those around in here to have some other evergreen interest around this shed in winter. I got the mock orange planted. This is the Illuminati Arch mock orange, and it's got just buds all over it. As I mentioned in the video where I got this in, this does not bloom typically in this time of year. It blooms in spring, early summer, uh, but because it was grown in a greenhouse on this year, its bloom time is a bit off. So. Next spring, summer, we should get some beautiful blooms. It should smell really great. I haven't noticed a whole lot of fragrance from these blooms yet, uh, but I expect we will get some good fragrance next year. I just briefly wanted to show you this pink icing blueberry. Uh, I have really, really loved this variety. This, this new foliage is absolutely gorgeous. And ever since I put it in my Vigo bed container, it has really taken off. I had some people asking about my Dahlia bed project. This is my Vigo garden bed that I planted up with around 30 different Dahlias. And they are finally coming along. It kind of concerns me because we're getting cool temperatures and Dahlias don't really love the cool temperatures. So. Um, they are really really just starting to put on a ton of buds though with all the rain we had this week we did have some pretty bad winds so i've had some that have blown over uh, and i've had some broken stems on some of these but i've decided for next year that i'm going to be moving my dahlias to my vegetable garden while these dahlias are beautiful they're kind of out of sight out of mind and i need to check on them and deadhead them more regularly than i've been able to uh, where they're at. So these will be going in my vegetable garden just so I can keep a better eye on them. Uh, and then I will be planting tomatoes either in this container in the back or in the ground. I've had tomatoes growing in the ground for the past two years back here and they have done really, really well. So I think I will continue that or find something else to plant in here. I did pick this beautiful bloom from the dahlias today and I actually didn't have a container to put it in. I didn't want it to go to waste so I just stuck it at the top of my fountain right here and it's kind of cute. There will also be the opportunity to plant some perennials in this space to kind of fill in the area. As I mentioned, I'm getting rid of a lot of perennials, but I still want to try out new varieties and see how they perform. So I'll be getting some in this week and I'll do a video on those and where I'm going to be placing them. I just would like to try new varieties and see how they perform because as I'm removing a lot of perennials from my garden, I'm still keeping a lot of them. Because the truth is, I don't hate perennials. I just hate perennials that don't provide a lot in the garden year round. And that's really difficult to find in a perennial. It's one of the reasons I'm focusing on perennials that provide foliage texture instead of bloom. So there's a peak of perennials in June uh, and they look pretty awful after that, a lot of varieties, and they have to be cut back or some die back to the ground. And then usually you'll get another flush sometimes towards the beginning of fall, uh, late summer. But I think I'm done with those type of perennials. I want perennials that provide nice foliage texture 
Uh, so I'll be introducing a lot of Hukura, as I've told you about, which perform year round. They're evergreen in my area. Uh, they do need some trimming on the leaves in the early spring, late winter to just kind of get some of that really tough foliage depending on how bad your winter was. But those are the type of things I'm going to be introducing that provide some color and texture without necessarily being a bloom. Because as you know, I have lots of blooms in my garden. Plenty of things to be in bloom. So at this point of my garden and its transition, we're going to be focusing on textures, foliage, and evergreen shrubs. And that's something I'm really excited to transition into because I'm not focused on a lot of that in my garden yet. A lot of my garden has been about flower power. Uh, and so my next transition is going to be adding those elements that just give it a little more, I think, and provide something that I will enjoy year round rather than looking out my garden in winter and there not being anything, no interest at all. Uh, it certainly brings a lot more joy during those cold winter months, if you can look out at your garden and say, I did this, this is gorgeous. So I encourage you as we go into fall to look at adding those own elements to your garden. Uh, I think it will be something that will challenge you because there's certainly lots of varieties out there you can pick from, but I also think you'll find enjoyment for it. And now is the time to get those things in the ground. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be doing an October garden tour, I promise you. Uh, I want to get the fence in the ground and all of that set up first. And I want to go out of the season with a bang because over winter I probably won't be producing very much content until seed starting season starts. And you know, that's kind of boring. It's in my house. It's really cold in Ohio during winter. I can't really get outside and shoot content unless we have a really weird winter where it's really warm. Uh, which this year is expected to be kind of brutally cold so that's why i'm focusing on getting as much in the ground as early as i can before the first frost because i need that stuff to settle in the last thing i want to do is lose a bunch of plants this winter that i spent lots of money on and focused a lot of time on putting in the ground so i hope you guys enjoyed this video lots more content coming i will probably wait a good week and until I start putting evergreens into the new bed over here with the kindred spirit oaks. I want to give the grass a little bit of time to die back. Uh, I'm afraid that if I start planting it too soon, bluegrass is relentless and it will start coming up around those boxwoods and that will be no fun to eradicate. So I'm going to give that another week or so and then I'll start planting all of those boxwoods in a hedge. And then I'll have an entire edge of the yard over here that will have a fence against it and be a beautiful backdrop for planting more stuff. Um, so depending on what I have left over, evergreen, I'm going to add some evergreens over here. But I may spend winter thinking about this space and what I want to do over here. It's not going to be a very big space. It'll be a few feet deep. Um, but I also want it to be something beautiful to look at in that direction as well. So thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. This weekend was a complete success and one of the most productive weekends in the garden this year. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.